Poker often sees scandals, and one recent big one involved a player named Mike Possel. This scandal became so big it even got a gate attached to its name. There have been many scandals talked about, but this one took the spotlight. This is the story of Mike Possel. A Henderson man, one of 25 players, accusing one of their own of cheating. 13 Action News reporter Austin Carter explains how they say he swindled them out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. First things first, Mike Possel's early life remains shrouded in mystery. But one thing's for sure, he didn't grow up amidst the glitz of Las Vegas poker tables. His journey into the world of poker wasn't a flashy one. It was a gradual immersion. Starting with local home games and small casino tournaments, he slowly carved his path in the game, earning a reputation as a formidable player. However, as his passion for poker deepened, he yearned for more, eventually leading him dangerously close to the edge. In July 2018, something extraordinary happened. Mike Possel went on an amazing winning streak, pocketing around $250,000. His victories mainly happened in low-stakes, no-limit Texas Hold'em games, particularly in the $13 and $25 categories at Stone's Gambling Hall near Sacramento, California. The highlight of his winning spree was during live-streamed games, where his skills always stood out. During a live stream at Stone's in September 2019, suspicions that had lingered for months seemed to be confirmed. Veronica Brill, the color commentator at Stone's Gambling Hall, who had previously raised concerns, became more convinced that Possel was cheating. Her conviction grew as she witnessed strange and unconventional gameplay, especially during crucial moments. According to the lawsuit, Possel's winnings were unprecedented in the world of professional poker, statistically unimaginable. In one memorable hand during a recurring live stream, Possel, known for his unorthodox style, baffled Brill by folding a strong hand instead of calling a bet. Brill expressed her disbelief, saying, It doesn't make sense. It's like he knows it doesn't make sense. It's weird. A week later, Brill intensified her suspicions by releasing an 18-minute video and a series of tweets, showcasing Possel's consistently peculiar hands deviating from established poker norms. In each instance highlighted in Brill's video, Possel emerged victorious or saved money by folding hands that should have been played conventionally. It's sick to me that Mike P knows to call him there. He's been playing for the last month, a month and a half at an extra high level. It's been kind of crazy. How do you play against Mike P? Answer is, you don't. There's been a lot of talk about Mike Possel and his remarkable performances in California's live-streamed cash games. However, recent allegations of cheating have rocked the poker community. Despite Possel being a regular at Stone's Gambling Hall, some are now questioning his victories, pointing to a series of suspicious hands as evidence that his success may not be due to his skill or luck, but something more dubious. Well, before we know the truth about all this, be sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss any of our videos. Veronica Brill, known on Twitter as Angry Pollock, sparked a discussion about potential cheating without directly naming Mike Possel, stirring up controversy. Brill, who used to commentate on many of the streamed games, occasionally still provides guest commentary. Stone's Gambling Hall regularly hosts live-streamed cash games with varying stakes, from $1 in $3 to $5 in $5, sometimes with additional straddles. Possel is a frequent player in these games, even hosting his own Possel and Pals sessions. However, according to numerous posters on a rapidly growing 2 plus 2 thread, he doesn't participate in many of the unstreamed games on the property. Joey Ingram dedicated countless hours to scrutinizing live-streamed footage, aiming to uncover the truth surrounding Mike Possel's gameplay. King Jack, underpair, ace-10, something like that, right? So he checks. While hesitant to outright label Possel as a cheater, Ingram deemed certain hands as suspect. He meticulously compiled these moments into a five-hour video shedding light on numerous questionable instances. Just this thing, I've watched the interview Mike had, I've watched where he's spoken on stream, he talks about how he's, he's very much has a read of the players, he likes to get a, a psychological player, he can tell what a player has by looking at him, a number of different stuff like that. So he sort of looks around, does this dance. Ingram delved deeper into the matter during a second live stream.
One notable hand involved Team Poker Stars pro Chris Moneymaker in a $5 $5 game with a $45 straddle. When Jason B. and Bear Hat called with modest hands, Naga raced to $245 with an ace of hearts and a king of clubs. Moneymaker responded with a hefty raise to $705, holding an ace of diamonds and a king of spades. Surprisingly, despite only having a five of hearts and a four of clubs, Postle decided to call Moneymaker's substantial bet. With the other players folding, Naga went all in for $2,900, prompting Moneymaker to reshove for $4,100. Unbelievably, Postle then called off his $3,400 stack, adding to the intrigue surrounding his gameplay. Several of Postle's plays have come under scrutiny, appearing inconsistent with his typically loose-aggressive style. One glaring example is folding pocket kings pre-flop against aces, or merely calling one bet with a full house on the river when facing a larger full house. Regarding the latter hand, Postle argued that RFID technology misidentified his cards, suggesting he actually held a weaker hand, tens and eights. In response, Matt Berkeley pointed out that RFID technology would only mislabel a card if it was initially registered incorrectly, leading to consistent errors throughout the stream. Another noteworthy hand involved an astonishing bet three bet on the river. With a nine of diamonds and a six of spades on a board showing six of clubs, four of spades, king of hearts, ace of hearts, and ace of diamonds. This hand, against a missed backdoor flush, drew the interest of high stakes cash game and tournament specialist Scott Seaver. Describing it as the most damning hand, Danny Steinberg emphasized its significance in the ongoing scrutiny of Postle's gameplay. Seaver's reaction was visceral. Holy shit, I didn't see this one. Anyone that doesn't understand the clear cheat that happens here should switch games they play. High stakes player Haralibos Vulgaris echoed similar sentiments, suggesting that the situation appears suspicious at best. At Primordial AA, what I am witnessing is either a time traveling wizard, a cheat, or the greatest poker player of all time, Haralibos Vulgaris. Postle has taken to social media to defend himself, asserting that he's been a successful player for 16 years, both live and online, relying on his very good instincts. He dismissed those questioning his integrity as jealous hating ones who have it out for me. In an effort to clear his name, he shared a series of hands where he made what he believes are legitimate plays, including folding a superior hand and draw against a player bluffing with a low hand on the turn. Despite Postle's attempts at explanation, many remain skeptical, wondering how any cheating could have been carried out. Most streamed shows adhere to a standard protocol. Whole cards are only visible to a select few in a controlled room on the premises, with no access permitted during play to maintain game integrity. Commentators, players, and viewers typically watch on a delay, usually ranging from 30 minutes to an hour. Consequently, suspicion has turned towards the individuals behind the scenes of the stream, with some raising doubts about the venue itself. Poker News contacted Stones for a comment regarding the situation, but the response received did little to address the specific concerns raised. At Stones, we value the customer experience and integrity of all our games, a spokesperson said. We evaluate all complaints and take corrective action when appropriate to ensure a fair and fun playing environment for all. A Twitter response was considerably more aggressive. Seaver's dissatisfaction with the venue's response was evident. The question isn't if he cheats, it's how you could possibly play at a casino that claims there was no cheating ever again he remarked. Despite numerous suspicious instances, enough to spark debate and raise doubts about the game at Stones, proving the accusations against Postle definitively would be challenging. As the saga unfolds, whether legal action will be pursued remains uncertain. While a criminal case seems improbable, a civil case cannot be ruled out. Many observers and locals speculate that Postle may have pocketed at least a six-figure sum from the streamed games. If the allegations against him hold weight, parties on the losing end may seek to recoup their losses through legal means. Well, in a game where the stakes are high and the players even higher, who holds the ultimate winning hand? 
the skilled strategist or the master manipulator? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing content. Until next time, keep your cards close and your curiosity even closer.